Night Things Journal, Entry 387. Lothric has gone to crap. The filth that was once limited to Blight Town now flows through the streets we walk. Law enforcement officers and politicians fight amongst themselves in a never-ending power struggle. All while the citizens of Lothric go about their daily lives like nothing's wrong. After all, life has always been rough in the poor quarters. I've had to beat an old lady with a stick to get some cranberries. Nevertheless, there are some things even I can't tolerate. Last night the word went out that an unspeakable evil had arisen in Ann Orlando. Somehow Gwendolyn returned. I'm not about to sit idly by while one more string-pulling scum lord shows up to manipulate us all. Legend speaks of an ancient weapon that was used to defeat Gwendolyn during the Age of Fire. I've managed to track this weapon down to the sewers beneath the undead settlement. But to get there, I'm gonna need to use the tools I have at my disposal to send some lowlifes to the afterlife. Hey, I thought this was supposed to be about punching. Why is he using a sword? Oh, we didn't realize that's what you wanted. The idea of our story was to show you how to use the Kaistus at maximum efficiency. But I suppose if you want to see how to punch the entirety of Dark Souls 3, then we may have something for you after all. Again soon. Oh, that wasn't nearly as helpful as I thought it was going to be. Oh well, I suppose Dark Souls 3 simply wasn't meant to be punched. Thank you for listening to our story today. Oh, alright. If you're still interested, then we can go back to the original plan and show you how to make an efficient build without punching the entirety of the game. Yes, yes, thank you. Let's get on with it. Hey everyone, today I'm going to show you how to beat Dark Souls 3 using the Kaistus. 
So first off, you should pick Mercenary and choose the Life Ring. Make pork chops out of gun deer, then run around and get everything you saw me collect earlier in the video. You can trade a firebomb with the invisible birds in the nest here for a large titanite shard, which will come in handy later. Now cruise on down and make minced meat out of vort. Business as usual. I know the curved sword you start out with is kind of a sissy weapon. It's not very manly. But never fear, you will be running on pure testosterone in a mere matter of minutes. So take a ride on the Batboy Express and make your way through the undead settlement. If you like parrying, then you can grab the small leather shield here. Make sure you kill this lizard, because it drops a sharp gem, which is going to be very important moving forward. When you get to the place where giant arrows are being rained down from the sky, come over here and steal the pants off this dead guy. Fortunately, you both wear the same size. Kill these ugly boneheaded mutts so they don't come back to bite you in the butt cheeks, and then head on down into the sewers. And here it is, the mighty Kaistus, back for one final adventure. You can now throw out a frantic flurry of flying fists, but where the Kaistus really shines is in its weapon art, perseverance. This makes it so that for a few seconds you'll have poise and defense through the roof like it's Dark Souls 1 all over again. It won't save you from getting parried though, so watch out for that. Anyways, kick the snot out of this guy so you can steal his clothes. If he falls off the ledge, then just rest at the bonfire and his clothes will reappear. I know they're pretty tattered and gross looking, and they might be carrying smallpox, but these are just some of the sacrifices you'll have to make on your journey to becoming the ultimate punching master. Now for this build, you'll want to level up Vigor to 40, and level up Dexterity as high as you possibly can. And those are the only stats you'll need for this run. Nice and simple. Kick the snot out of these dogs. Make sure you keep a purging stone on hand at all times in case you contract rabies or something. And go ahead and recruit Yol, since his services will come in handy later. Now make your way from the undead settlement to the Farren Woods. Run through this corridor with the Black Knight, and you'll find a very important item. The Farren Coal. Give the coal to Andre, and then infuse your Kaistus with a sharp infusion. Since you're leveling up Dexterity, the sharp infusion will turn your Kaistus into an absolute monster. You can now kick the snot out of anyone in the early game with no problem at all. Lothric Knights think they're so tough, but now you've made them into your own personal punching bags. And we're not even done with making our punching build yet. In fact, we're really only just getting started. So head on down to the Poison Swamp and you'll find this cluster of slugs. Beat the snot out of the slugs, quite literally in this case, and you'll find a cloth mask on this corpse here. This will become important later on, and besides which, the Lothric Health Organization recommends everyone be wearing masks while indoors. As for your own personal safety, you wouldn't want to inhale any of that toxic mist that's been spreading from the poison swamp and infecting households and businesses all throughout Lothric, so put the mask on and keep it on whenever you're around other people. Now climb up to the top of this extremely tall ladder, punch through this illusory wall, and you'll find some ashes. Give the ashes to the Shrine Handmaiden, and you'll be able to buy as many Titanite Shards as you need to upgrade your Fist Weapon. Now head up the elevator near the ladder, jump off the wall at this open spot, and head on over to the other side of the wall. Here you'll find a couple of Lizards, which are important because they both give you large Titanite Shards. Now beat the crap out of the Stray Demon. You won't get anything special for doing it, but you know, you get souls for it and that's always useful. Now jump off the elevator in the Undead Settlement and meet up with Sigurd. Sigurd is a very wise man, a very thoughtful man, but sometimes he needs a little extra motivation to act. So go pick a fight with Hothead over here, and Sigurd will come to back you up. Monster Man won't be able to handle the wombo combo, so send his derpy looking face into the dirt. Now head up to the top of this nearby building and you'll find what you came for, Flynn's Ring. You can also head down through this tower over here so you can pick up the Chloranthi Ring, which is also pretty useful. Anyways, 
Flynn's ring will increase the physical damage you put out based on how light your clothes are, which is why we've been collecting the lightest clothes in the game. Technically speaking, there's a loincloth, which is lighter than the cleric trousers, but unless you want to be seeing man buns every time you roll, then it's better just to stick with the pants you've already got. Remember you can use your small shield for parrying? The forest hunters have really gone downhill since you killed Sif, so finish what you started and kick the snot out of the remaining members. Now fight your way through the cathedral, and you'll meet up with another Onion Knight. However, in a stunning twist, it turns out that it was actually trusty patches the whole time. So say hello to the nice giant, and then beat the crap out of him. Beat the crap out of Patches as well? Sorry man, in another world we might have been friends, but you just had to go and be a pain in the butt. You betrayed me, and you betrayed Sigurd, and that's just not acceptable. Anyway, you'll find Sigurd in this well outside the cathedral, so go ahead and give him his armor back that Patches stole from him. Now go beat up the local congregation, these guys are a bunch of hacks anyway, since they aren't helping the poor people of Lothric. You can now consume the soul they drop for an easy 20,000 souls, and use it to buy the tower key. Head on up through the tower outside Firelink Shrine, then jump down through the adjoining tower on the other side. At the bottom you'll find the Estus Ring, which is very important for achieving maximum survivability in any given fight. You can also trade a black firebomb with the birds for a titanite chunk. Now go and talk to Yul. He'll offer you level ups in exchange for levels of hollowing, so go ahead and level up with him. Now go find a cliff, and jump off it until you reach level 15 in hollowing. These eyes have seen things you wouldn't believe, kid. You can now get four more levels out of Yul, and more levels means more power, and more power means more punching. Doesn't matter if you end up looking like frostbitten beef jerky, between Flynn's ring and high dexterity, you will be able to beat the snot out of absolutely anyone. Even Bone Lord Bill doesn't stand a chance against you. When you get to the Molten Lake, you'll be able to find plenty of large titanite shards to upgrade your Kaistus with, and if you come over to this small cave over here, then you'll also find some titanite chunks. You can meet up with Sigurd when you get to Irithil, and he'll give you some booze for the road. Punch Pontiff in the face, he's just a wimpier version of Fume Knight anyways. Now when you get to An Orlando, you'll find this false wall here, and beneath it you'll find a water reserve with two fluffy alligators in it. They're both pretty strong, so make sure you deal with them one at a time, and as a reward for killing them, you'll get the Ring of Favor. It's not quite as powerful as it used to be, but it is better than the life ring. It turns out the Silver Knights are back, probably wanting revenge for killing the fake Guinevere, but just like last time, the only thing they'll be getting is a metal studded fist to the face. At this point, you've almost made it to Gwendolyn's lair, but first you gotta deal with this big fuzzy spider, and since it's a little too big to step on, you'll need to employ some alternate tactics. So lure it to the bridge that connects to the giant elevator, and its brain will inexplicably break. So take advantage of the situation, and go ahead and break its face as well. And now for the moment you've been waiting for, the big boss fight against Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn is stronger than ever now, he's fused himself with a giant slug monster, he can rain hundreds of arrows down on your head, and he's got all kinds of crazy magic, but don't give up, and you will take him down. Justice has now been served like a five-course Thanksgiving dinner, and the streets of Lothric are just a little bit safer thanks to your work. But unfortunately, you still haven't become the ultimate punching master yet, and there's still a little bit more work to be done in Lothric. So keep leveling up your dexterity, and head over to Lothric Castle. Now you might think that the local knights will be protected by their heavy armor, but let me ask you this. Has Tinfoil ever protected a baked potato against sudden impact? I think not. Anyways, here in the castle grounds, you'll be able to find enough titanite chunks to get your Kaistus to plus nine. Now make your way through the Irithil dungeon, and grab the cell key out of this chest here. Kick the snot out of Candlestick Jack, and then jump from the roof and into this doorway. Here you'll find out that Sigurd got himself thrown in the joint, probably for dozing off in a public porta potty. So use the key you found to bust him out of his cell, 
and he will reward you with a titanite slab. Now you're finally ready to take on the king of the big boys, and you'll have Siegward to back you up once again. Yorm is pretty much impervious to fist weapons, so just play bait and let Siegward do all the heavy hitting. Easy peasy, you have achieved victory and gained more power. As you can see, with your now fully upgraded fists, you will be able to out DPS anyone but there are still a couple of ways you can improve your defenses. After you've beaten all the Lords of Cinder, you'll be able to warp to the dredge heap. Head down to the Poison Swamp, climb up this giant tree root, and at the end you'll find the upgraded version of the Ring of Favor. You can also go back to the Undead Settlement, knock this hanging corpse off this cliff, and pick up the Flame Stone Plate Ring off it. This will increase your fire absorption, and it'll come in handy against the final boss. So yeah, that's the build. The only thing remaining is the final boss, and he should be no problem at all, given how strong you've become. I'm strong. Well, if it isn't Saucy Jack, just a little too late, as usual. Impressive little toy you've got there. But your plan ends here. Present in two with my bare hands. 